Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing going through the book of Hebrews, and we actually completed the uh, third chapter yesterday. But remember, as always, the chapter division and the versification is man-made. In other words, we create these things just to make it easier to access it. And it does make it a lot easier to know where chapter is and know where verse is, right, to be able to go to a place. But the original letters would not have had anything uh, like that. And so sometimes we lose the flow of thought when we get to the end of a chapter. We think something's over with, and then something else is going to be picked up in the next chapter. And that's not always so. And this is a case in point. Uh, the writer was given the children of Israel, uh, their forefathers really, as an example of how they'd come out of Egypt, and yet they had not entered into the promised land. And the reason they hadn't entered the promised land was because they were disobedient. But his point was this. At the last verse of the third chapter of Hebrews, he says, so we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Unbelief. Yes, they were disobedient. The previous verses said that they were disobedient. But the unbelief, unbelief in what? Well, unbelief in the Word of God. Okay, Unbelief in what God had told them. He said, I will bring you into this promised land. I will do this. He, he told them everything that he would do. And they came back, the uh, committee, and said, oh, yeah, everything is just like God said. It is a land flowing milk and honey. We can't do it. We can't take it. When the Lord had told them they could. And so because of unbelief, they could not enter the rest, R-E-S-T, of the promised land. And that's the point <coughs> Excuse me, of the author of Hebrews here. And he continues on with this in the fourth chapter, the first verse. Therefore, so in light of all this, right, in light of this, let us fear, that's what it says, let us fear. It's the word uh, phobia, from phobia, which means to put to flight, to be terrified, and to be afraid of, okay? And now, we all sort of uh, will come back and say, well, I thought we were only to fear God. Well, that's true. It's the same word. We're to be in awe of God. We're to revere God. We're not to live life in fear, okay? But what is speaking of right here, it says, let us fear in case we do something, okay? We need to have a, 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 a righteous fear that we won't do something. So watch this. Therefore, let us fear if while a promise remains of entering his rest, that's the rest of the Lord, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. Ah, so what's the point here? The point is, he said, make sure that you have this righteous fear, okay? Not the paralyzing fear, not the fear of anxiety, not the fear of the flesh, not the fear of the world, but this understanding that you don't want to come short of entering the rest of the Lord. Look what it says. While a promise remains of entering his rest, the Lord has given us a promise that we can enter into his rest. And we're going to see more about this as we go through the fourth chapter here. A lot of details about it, as a matter of fact. But he says he's promised this to us. We, he said, you saw the example through your forefathers of what happened. They could have gone into the promised land and been in there in less than a month's time. It took them 40 years because of unbelief. And that generation died off. It was their children that was able to go in. So he says, let us have a fear that while we have a promise of entering to his rest, that any one of us may seem to come short of it. So let there be that fear that, that you don't want to come short of entering the rest. Well, entering the rest when? Is that speaking of the rest that we're going to have in glory? That's usually the way that most people think of the rest of the Lord, interpret it, and that kind of stuff. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about entering the rest of the Lord in this life, at this moment, at this time, today. Well, let's continue verse 2. For indeed, we have good news preached to us, just as they also... But the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. Now, I just want us to think on this for a moment, okay? He says, we have good news preached to us just as they also. 
So remember what the author is, uh, what the purpose is. He tells us in the 13th chapter, he said, uh, I urge you to bear with this brief word of exhortation. He's exhorting them, exhorting them related to what? Well, they were undergoing some trials, some tribulations. They were undergoing some temptations. Some were being tempted to stray away from the faith, to walk away from the faith, to go back to Judaism, things like that. And he's telling them, say, remember this, you've had the good news preached to us. Now, remember, folks, he's called them brethren repeatedly, right? And he's talked about how they've shared in this common faith. So they, he's talking to those who are believers. He says, we've had good news preached to us, just as they also, that they also is the forefathers that, you know, came out of Egypt and did not enter in the promised land. They had the good news. What was the good news for them? Hey, there is a promised land. There is a land of rest that we can go to right now and no longer be slaves. No longer be slaves. So we've had the good news, the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that there is a promise of entering into the rest of the Lord. They had good news of being saved out of Egypt, being rescued, delivered, and redeemed out of slavery, and being led into the promised land. But watch this. Watch this. But the word they heard did not profit them. They had the word, and you know what? They believed the word, and yet they did not believe the word. You can believe but not believe. See, if you believe and you have no action with it, then it's no good. And that's what he's saying. But the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. Huh. In other words, they saw in the natural. They saw with their eyes. They saw the Anakim. They saw the Rephim. They saw the giants in the land. And they said, we can't do this. We can't enter into this because there's giants in the land. There's giants in the land. We can't take it. They did not unite the word that they had received. If they believed, they believed that they could go to the promised land. They didn't unite it by faith. And because of that, they did not go. I think there's something there for us to hear, folks. He's tying it together for us, too. Let me read verse 2 again. For indeed, we have good news preached, uh, preached to us. That's us, just as they also. But the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. So what's he saying to us? Hey, we need to take this good news that we have received, and we need to uh, live it out by faith. Let me read verse 3, then we'll be done. For we who have believed... Enter that rest, just as he also said, and this is a quote from the Old Testament, as I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. I'll tell you what, my time's running short, so we'll t discuss this the next time. But I just want you to see something here, that we who believe have entered that rest, but he's given us a word of warning. I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. He says that. Several times he quotes that same passage. You know, I don't know how many times in this third and fourth chapter. I want to say four or five times. You can tell the Lord was really perturbed about this, that his people refused to enter the rest that he had granted them. We as believers positionally have the, uh, the rest of the Lord, and we have entered into the rest. But do we live in the rest of the Lord? When we see the balance of this chapter right here, I think we're going to get some answers, okay? Again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for your time and join with me, and I'll see you next episode.